Well, 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 welcome back, basketball fans. It is officially October 1st. We're here to talk some basketball here on Zero Gravity, Apollo Media's NBA podcast brought to you by Big City Wings and our old friends, Celebrity Men. They're back on in October, so shout out to those sponsors for joining us on this episode of Zero Gravity. Josh, welcome back. How are we doing, buddy? Thank you, brother. I'm great. You know, um, if the Astros won today, it would have been a lot better. Um, kind of a chaotic yeah. world uh, going on in basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, Woj leaving. Cat getting traded. Uh, RIP to Kimby. Uh, a lot of stuff happening. A lot of emotions. Uh, I'm just glad to be here with you. It's been a minute. Yeah. We haven't talked since the gold medal game. What, what What's up with you, brother? I like the no. new background, by the way. Yeah, got a new place. Uh, oh. Haven't painted anything, and it's a complete mess back there. But that's okay. We'll work on that throughout the season. It'll it'll change. It'll look better. It'll be fine. It's okay. But yeah, new place, new background. Uh, same vibes. Same zero gravity. Nothing's oh. changed. Never change. Never change, brother. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so yesterday, last day of September, uh, Dikembe Mutombo died of brain cancer at the age of 58. It's uh, rest in peace to him and condolences to his family. And he was just a joy all around, always was in all the commercials, on the on the court. Uh, it's just a, a blast of a person. Uh, the finger wag will live on forever in every NBA fan's brains forever. I mean, until they die. So... We love Dikembe. Uh, rest in peace to him. And I know you have many more memories than I do of Dikembe, but rest in oh, peace. Man, rest in peace. Uh, not Growing up, especially in Houston, you know, um, during, after, and, you know, when Yao Ming was hurt, Tracy McGrady was hurt, you know, Dikembe not only stepping up for what a 22-game win streak, but the city as well. And, you know, not only a life legend, a, a humanitarian legend, but an all-around basketball legend. I mean, I tend to not say this that much, but, you know, because, you know, emotions are weird, but life truly is unfair for some people, for most people, for, you know, of course, death is imminent, but man, this young, so sad, you know, he, he's almost like larger than life in a lot of ways. And I just don't, you know, anyone can say that about a tall person, but the Kimbe was just different. I mean, what he did for Africa, what he did for so many different people. And of course, the all time funny guy. I mean, seriously, sex Matumbo, who want a sex Matumbo? All time Dan Levitard, all time Alonzo Morning bit. Uh, love what was going on over there. Love, love the memories that he's he he's caused for me and my family. He's he's propelled my my love for basketball ever since I was a kid. I mean, when he came here when I was four or five years old, and coming but looking back now, I mean, his, his, I think his kids playing basketball. There's so much happening in his family, so much happening like with his legacy, and I'm so fortunate and so happy. And you know, life is life is beautiful, man. Cherish it, cherish that shit, man. For sure. And when you're that tall, there's there's one of two options that they have. They either are recluse like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and you don't really get anything until he's a little bit older. And he had the social activism stuff and all that kind of when he was playing. But he kept to himself. He, he was kind of an asshole, um, reportedly. Uh, <laughs> like, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. But like you're either that or you're like Dikembe and Shaq, where you're the life of the party. You're always welcoming. You're always engaging with folks and understanding that yeah you are larger than life because you are just significantly bigger than anyone else in this world so it's cool to see athletes like that just embracing it and understanding that they're different and understanding that people want to talk to them just because they're tall or just because they play basketball so Dikembe was like that and it's a it's a shame that he's already gone but it's weird in the basketball community um, when a player dies like Bill Russell when he died, uh, Kobe Bryant when he died. Like, it's strange. Like Jerry West, he was recent. Um, it's a it's a strange strange thing because even when other players die and in other sports, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because we're basketball nuts and we've grabbed onto that sport and those players. And th- when they leave us, it's it's a strange strange hole that yep. is created inside of you. So, yep. shout out to Kim Beck and shout out to his family and shout out to the basketball community. Rest in peace. You know what else we can say rest in peace to? Here it is. The Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> <laughs> man. Man, what man, a transition. Man. What was Stone going to do? Only Stone. Only only what you could do, brother. Beautiful. Man, oh man, Luca. He's the Grim Reaper in the Western Conference. His first, it was the Jazz with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. It was the Suns, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. Kills them. He just killed them. It's over. Um uh, and then, then you get the, the Timberwolves. There's another team in there that I'm completely... Oh, the Clippers. The Clippers. Uh, Paul George, gone. Dead. Bye. Not dead. Um, he's in Philly. But 
yeah, another Western Conference team has decided to break up their big three. If there is really a big three in this NBA that we have now, I don't think there is, but it was their version of a big three and three all stars, defense player def- of the year. Definitely a tall three. I wouldn't say a big three, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but Carl Anthony Towns traded to the New York Knicks, who finally pull a trigger and do something big. Uh, they traded Dante DiVincenzo and Julius Randle and the Detroit first rounder, I believe, next season. So interesting trade. Uh, makes Minnesota different. Uh, makes New York different. Uh, it, it seems online when I was just perusing the Twitter. I was out on Friday night. I was having having some drinks. I was in the cigar lounge at Javier's in Dallas. It was a, it was a great time when that broke. And when that happened, I was just inhaling cigar smoke everywhere and getting a nice buzz while reading tweets. It was a great time. <laughs> like, I, that sounds beautiful. Yeah, I just dug into my phone. I was like, holy shit, this, <laughs> they finally did something, the Knicks. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this trade? Uh, I, immediate off the top of the uh, – I was just going to say, man, like Luka Doncic himself has destroyed so, – you, you hit the nail on the head, brother, and I hate to – you know, I know you're a homer through and through, but – damn it, you're not wrong. For once, you're not wrong. Like, man, I, I the Western Conference is such a gauntlet and the fact that you have, like, Carl Anthony Towns, who, I mean, could we raise his life stock even more and call him the greatest big man shooter of all time, especially no. in, in MSG? I don't know. It's early October. I can say whatever I want. But, dude, I mean, seriously, this is the, Julius Randle, Rudy Gobert, and Anthony Edwards being a big three in the Western Conference, Nas Reed being on that. Is that the slowest team in the NBA? Is that the 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 worst? But depending on how you look at it, best vibes in the NBA because the big litmus test for a lot of NBA heads is your opinion on Rudy Gobert. You know this, and if the Minnesota Timberwolves win fifty five games next year or even fifty games next year, it's like, what's your opinion on the Timberwolves? Do you like them? Do you not like them? I, I'm not. I'm not with it right now. Uh, clearly, uh, of course, I would love to say that their team got worse. Probably would think that their team got worse. But knowing New York and seeing how everything's turning out, I, I, this is almost a best-case scenario for them. They've been trying to make a splash for years, and they've made splashes here and there, great deadline splashes, um, but nothing compared to this. And this is just levels levels beyond, beyond comprehension and 60 wins for New York this year, dare I say. Wow. Dare I say. Dare I say. I mean, anything. seriously, early October talk, anything can happen. The high, hindsight's twenty twenty, but the future sight, I don't know, man. Could be I, I, 1919. I don't know. I think the Knicks are now comfortably the second best team in the East. There it uh, is. The problem with this trade now is that you've lost a little bit of depth. Um, obviously, you trade for Mikael Bridges. You do that trade 10 times out of 10. He's an incredible player, and now he gets to play with his friends. Like, the Nova Knicks thing was a real thing, like, legitimately last season with Josh Hart, Jalen Brunson, and the other guy. Who, who's the other guy? Devin Chenzo. Yeah, it was Dante DiVincenzo. There, there we is. go. Yeah, we know ball. Brain, we know ball brain, here. Brain fart there. It just <laughs> completely fell apart for a second. But yeah, the Nova Knicks thing, like the vibes were immaculate. It, it was in, in the garden, New York City, the Nova Knicks. Like it was a real thing. And then they trade from Mikhail Bridges and you're like, oh, it's the super Nova Knicks. Like you've got all of them now. You just all the good players from Nova on those national championship teams are all on the Knicks now. The vibes couldn't be higher. They do the FaceTime, the, the screenshot. Dante DiVincenzo was the only one that didn't look happy on that FaceTime. If you recall that screenshot, he's the only one like not smiling. Um, so with that trade, Dante DiVincenzo obviously goes to the bench. He becomes the six man role. He's the shooter off the bench. He, he could be in the closing lineups, depending on what's going on. If Josh Hart's out there, then he's probably not. But they re-signed OG Ananobi. Uh, there's just not a ton of space for Dante DiVincenzo to be in the starting lineup unless there's injuries, which it's a Tibbs team. They're all going to play 40 plus minutes a night for no fucking reason at all whatsoever. <laughs> so this trade... Fixed a problem. It made Dante DiVincenzo happier, I believe, because he's probably going to be a starting shooting guard or point guard, like shooting guard, combo guard, I guess, for the Timberwolves now with Anthony Edwards. Like, they're just going to both carry the ball up. I don't know. I don't are know. we forgetting Are we forgetting the old, old man point guard at, at one point, the highest paid point guard in NBA history? If he plays more than 33 games this year, I'll be surprised. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> and then you also had the Julius Randle problem where he seemed unhappy with the situation after the OG trade. And obviously he got hurt, so we didn't know how unhappy he was. But there was inklings before that trade happens. And then after it, something's up with Julius Randle in, in New York. No one knew what was going on. No one could de- decide. So 
I think you fixed the unhappy problem. Uh, is Cat going to be happy in the garden? TBD. Because his first tweet was dot, dot, dot. <laughs> his life was out there, man. I mean, you know, Minneapolis, Minnesota, you know, not notably not the greatest place in the world. It's cold. But a place you want to see succeed, you know, unless they're playing the Houston Astros in a playoff series yeah. um, or playing the Houston Texans on a Sunday. Um, that all being said, though, I, 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 of course, it's a huge change of scenery for the guy, but it's almost like that's your dream as a kid. I mean, I know the Knicks have never really been ever since the seventies, you know, an amazing team. They've been a playoff team at, at in some years. I, I almost said most there a uh, little slip, but I, I Cat, of course, I, he after all, he is the Dominican shooter. Like he can take him to the Bronx, let him sit in the Bronx, let him chill in the Bronx, get a big high rise apartment out there. The only high rise in the Bronx, build it just for him. He'll be there for the rest of his career. You might as well. I mean, seriously, I know, of course, like I said, a change of scenery is huge. And, you know, any any change of job, any change of anything like like that sucks, like the change is hard. But, dude, you're playing in mother effing New York. Like, enjoy it. Like, I I know I said 60 wins earlier, of course. Like, they're going to be a perennial playoff t- team for the next three years, five years. I mean, they're all they under might, contract they, for a while. So. They might get a ring out of it. I Maybe. Um, it's New York, so let's call T- it. TBD. TBD, <laughs> early October talk. Um, I just love seeing Carl Anthony Towns. You know, seriously, one of – you know, I know he's not – what's the word? You know, Boogie Cousins kind of uh, giving him that moment. You know, that'll never get out of my head. Um, yeah. Of course, you don't know what I'm referring to. Just a, a cat trying to post him up, and Boogie just absolutely big boy in him, not even moving a muscle, while Cat is uh, exuding all of his effort out. Um, you know, those pictures haunt players. And <laughs> I've seen that picture plenty of times. You have plenty of times. And I still have a positive opinion of the guy. And honestly, there's not a lot of players in this NBA that – I can say that I have a positive opinion about after something that big happens to them. Like Zion, for example, like we called him fat all last year. Like, Still and now he has, well next season. <laughs> and now he has this disgusting beard and it's really hard to look at him in a positive light. You notice that? Right. I didn't like, wasn't He's a fan. He's from South Carolina. I don't know. Yeah. It, That's it, what I'm drawing it up to. Him, South Carolina. <laughs> something like that. It's the, 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 the boys down South. They're just yeah. different. I don't I know. I grew up in Alabama is. for reference there. So I understand what's happening. Like that <laughs> just makes sense to me. It's the Southern gross redneck beard and everyone uh, yeah. from the South. They're with me. They understand what that is. <laughs> I love it. Uh, you know, seriously, Carl Anthony Towns being entering been in the prime of his career for a couple years now. I mean, this is almost a best case scenario for the guy, especially not having to deal with 40, 50, 60 game schedules in the West. I'm saying like mostly yeah. playing West teams can't do it. Um, so hopefully it all works out for the guy and the Knicks are fun. They're very top heavy, but they're fun. And Dante DiVincenzo, maybe you'll start some games in Minnesota. Uh, I hate the bad omen that you put out on our man, Mike Conley over there, but oof, geez, man, I, I don't know. Anything just, can happen. I guess Nas yeah. Reed, six man of the year, run it back. Or, st- or starting, starting center forward. of the year. Starting power forward of the year. I don't know. Like, yeah, the, the Timberwolves got worse, right? Mm-hmm. By, Definitely. like, a, a decent margin. Like, you created less space in your starting lineup now with Julius Randle. Julius Randle can shoot the three. Kind of. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes he'll go off from three. And that's perfectly fine. Cat is an incredible offensive player. He, You can almost guarantee that he's going to get you 20 and 10 a night. Like, he's just... He's incredibly good. And as much shit as I talked about Cat during the playoffs because he was playing my favorite team, like, I was going to talk shit about him. He started going off in those last few games, and I I was getting a little nervous. Like, (laughs) I was getting a little nervous. He's also, like, the dumbest player alive, Carl Anthony Towns. Um, Just the stupidest fouls you've ever seen in your life. He's going to commit those. And now Mm -hmm. he's back with Tibbs. Maybe that's something that they fix. Like, maybe he doesn't have as much defensive pressure because he's got an OG instead of Rudy Gobert traffic cone. Like, I... I don't know. Maybe it works. Also, did you see the graphic that ESPN put out? It was just the starting lineup of the Knicks. It was Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Mikhail Bridges, uh, OG Ananobi, and Carl Anthony Towns. And someone quote tweeted it. Did you see this? Uh, please, go ahead. Uh, they said it's like five different versions of Dominicans. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures. Uh, I was like, you know what? I've walked the streets in New York. They're probably right. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty yep. funny. That's yep. a great tweet. Um, but yeah, the the trade happened. Um, 
But it didn't happen without a little bit of remorse on my side. Because the first person to tweet it out was Shamshrania. And, you know, there wasn't a follow-up tweet right after that from someone else anymore. It, it, that person didn't tweet it out first. He wasn't the one to break the news anymore because Mr. Adrian Wojnarowski retired <laughs> from sports journalism. I I love your transition game. I think you deserve a Pulitzer Prize. You deserve a Pulitzer Prize uh, in journalism here. Sports journalism. Love it. Um, RIP. RIP Woj taking his uh, arguably, some would say, dream job, uh, his alma mater. Um, I, maybe. I mean, I think this is really sick. Now, now the question is, I mean, of course we can get into our favorite Woj bombs ever, but who is going to replace the guy? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. So there was a report that came out the other day from The Athletic. I can't remember who tweeted it from The Athletic, but had no article on it. It's behind a paywall. I don't have The Athletic anymore because they've gotten rid of almost exclusively all of my teams. No one has a writer for the Dolphins. There's no writer for the Astros anymore. There's no writer for – or take that back. they got an Astros writer, but I don't care to read Chandler Rome for no reason. I just don't like the guy. I don't know. Just Get kinda, him. He's condescending. I don't know. That's what it is. And they don't have a star rider. They got rid of the stars hockey. Uh, Saad Yusuf, he's over with the Cowboys now on, for the athletic. But So I just got rid of my athletic uh, subscription. So I didn't read it. So I don't really know the details of it. But Jeff Passan, the MLB newsbreaker nowadays, is um, being considered a front runner for the replacement of Woj at ESPN. Jeff already works at ESPN, so it works. Um, I think that'd be interesting. I like Jeff. He's a good reporter for the MLB. How do you go from having 30 plus contacts in the MLB and sources to just switching that over to a completely different sport. I don't know. I, that doesn't make sense in my brain. No idea. It's going to have to be the, the weirdest level of networking or just gift giving straight up. Like you are going to have to send fruitcakes to houses. You're going to have to send uh, bottles of uh, LeBron James Hennessy to uh, other houses, depending on your age group. I don't know what the situation would be. Yeah. But man, uh, Shefty, maybe didn't I couldn't see him doing it. Passan, I would love for Schefter to do my, it, but he won't really do it. No, no, no. Might I add, uh, Jeff Passan, uh, world's craziest forehead. Love, love his vibe that he's got going on over there. He um, looks much shorter on TV. He's apparently actually pretty tall. He took are you serious? He took a picture with the boys in 21, 22 at the uh, Astros playoff game. Uh, Dez, Brian, all of them, and he was he was on par with them. So he's six foot. Absolute. Like, it's a legend. He, he's a tall guy, you know? I didn't know that. I had no idea. <laughs> like he just looks in, he just looks short. Am okay. I wrong? Okay. I'm I mean he, he's got a he's got a little push together vibe, you know? It's just because you only see this. Like you could call me tall, you could call me short. I'm I'm short. Like I get that. But this is all I saw of Jeff Passon until I saw that picture and I was like, huh. Yeah. Kind of tall. I like him. <laughs> I love it, man. Good. For you. This is sports journalism at its finest. Maybe, you know, maybe we, maybe we can split the Pulitzer Prize in half. Um, yeah, I'm so happy with, uh, you know, any and all uh, accounts of whoever wants to try and be the new Woj. I even said John Fanta because I went home. Yeah. I think it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, and he was just commentating a bowling tournament, and I was just like, "This rips! Like, this is one of the coolest things I've ever seen." I need this guy to have every single NBA owners and GM's phone number like tomorrow. Like It'd that. Be funny. Dude, he rocks. The video of him uh, uh, shitting on the Cleveland Browns every week, every time they lose. You, are, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? The guy is, he's got he's, aura. He's got aura. It's he's insane. Incredible. The clips after the Browns games heard mm -hmm. just all time. PMT, uh, pardon my take on Barstool. They've, they've gone over it. 10 times over this season, and it's week four. It's incredible. Love it. Um, but Woj retired from journalism to take the, I think he's the GM of basketball operations at St. Bonaventure, or whatever it is, uh, mm -hmm. the Bonnies. Um, it's his alma mater, so he's, he's going back. But he's the GM of basketball operations, which entails the NIL for the basketball team. Do you know how stressful your job has to be to where you're retiring to take a job to work in NIL in this deal. They're constantly, constantly in depositions. They're constantly dealing with lawyers. They're constantly dealing with contracts. Like, this is not an easy job. This is not like a, oh, let's just sit back and relax retirement job. Like, this isn't just like a, oh, a former player that gets to go in the front office for his team that he played for for 20 years, where he's just like the ambassador. 
That's not what he's doing. He's controlling the NIL and like getting deals and dealing with lawyers constantly. Like this isn't something, this isn't a nine to five job. He's going to be working around the clock all the time again. And it's going to be way less stressful and he's going to get way more sleep than what he was doing with sports. Uh, You know, I don't know, man. I don't know. On one hand, I completely believe you if it's a huge school, but I almost view this as like a Marshall head coach pleading for like the biscuits, you know, for like Ohio State players to transfer. Like, hey, we got a two year NIL deal with a biscuit uh, with a breakfast spot. You can get unlimited biscuits like who is going to St. Bonnie's and getting bags? I mean, I, I, maybe I the know, alums, maybe there now. So maybe I, I guess I guess maybe the maybe the alums are going to start donating heavy. I mean, maybe there's five to ten crazy alums that are wicked famous that I have no idea about. I mean, surely that's how it is for actually most colleges. Um, yeah, I, I good good for him. And maybe this will be his like self fulfilling moment. He'll do this for a while and maybe venture into something else. I'd love to see him and Bill Simmons together doing an NBA draft in 2030. I mean, seriously, or maybe even no 2050. Way like, no like, way he likes Bill Simmons enough to do that. I don't care. I don't care. I want to see it happen. I, oh, and other than Woj, we had another crazy ESPN layoff. Uh, Woj retired, obviously, but we had a layoff. I, I completely forgot to write this down in our show notes. Uh, Zach Lowe. Yes. The best NBA writer that we have in the entire NBA. He's arguably the best sports writer that we have in today's journalism world that we have one of the best podcasts in the NBA world, the low post shout out to Zach Lowe laid off from ESPN for uh, what reason? Uh, Bill Simmons said it on his podcast. He was getting a million dollars a year. I don't know if that's public knowledge that Bill Simmons should have been saying, but no, <laughs> he put it out there. He was making a million dollars from ESPN. Stephen A is going to get like 20. Um, if they're going the TV route, what better person to have on TV than the most knowledgeable and best writer and like, He's just the best journalist in NBA that we have right now. Why wouldn't you want him on TV? He's actually very good on TV as well. Keeps everyone kind of level-headed with Kendrick Perkins and the likes in the room, like saying crazy things. And he just brings them back down to earth and they have an an actual conversation for about 30 seconds. And then the next three and a half minutes, it goes to chaos again. And then he has to bring them back down to earth for about 30 to 45 seconds. And then it's just, it's chaos. And they've, they've decided to do that. And it's frustrating. Um, I'm, Curious to see where Zach Lowe goes if he's going back to the to the old Bill Simmons route. You know, you know where he's going. I would love for him to go to the Ringer, and the Low Post just goes over there, and then we get Sunday Night Pods with Ryan Rosillo, Zach Lowe, and Bill Simmons on the Bill Simmons podcast. Do you know how incredible those Sunday Night Pods would be? I'm, that I'm Monday like, morning. I'm you shaking. Wake up, you wake up, and you just. You open up your phone. You you hit that podcast app wherever you get uh-huh. podcasts. This Apple or Spotify or Google, wherever you get your podcasts, and you just hit refresh, and all yes. of a sudden, it says Bill Simmons with Ryan Rosillo and Zach Lowe talking X about the NBA. Inject, inject anywhere. Like, I and everywhere. need it in my veins. Find my a brain. blood vessel. Find a blood vessel. I need it in my ears. I I just I need that. Like. God. I need that in my life. It would just be incredible. Um, I hope that's where he goes. If not, uh, he's going to have a successful career and he's going to be the most sought after free agent in journalism right now. uh, Easily. (laughs) He's going to get his million dollars from someone who that is. I don't know. We'll we'll have to wait and find out. But Zach Lowe laid off from ESPN. It's a shame that ESPN is going the way that they are, but they've made their bed and they're going to lie in it and they don't really care about the viewer. It yep. appears. Yep. They've made their ESPN bet and you can get a thousand dollars. I'm just kidding. They don't sponsor <laughs> us. Um, it's That's seriously, not, seriously no. sad. No, never. Um, we've been, <laughs> but we've been saying this, we've been saying this about ESPN for years now. I mean, it's been yeah, eight, it's eight been to 10 20, years. Like, Oh, it's surely. Been 10 years. Yeah. No. And for me, I went, when sports nation, you know, when they stopped doing the polls, when they stopped carrying the polls on the internet, on the, on the homepage, I was like, what the fuck, what are we doing? That's how I found out I, Michelle Beadle was sick. Cowherd at the time was sick. Bomani yeah. Jones ripped, loved him, and all those guests that they would have. I mean, seriously, like they they were tapped into like uh, the music scene heavy. They would, oh my god, it was almost the equivalent of like when Mac Miller went on Larry Wilmore in like 2015, 2016. Like that was a huge moment for like music heads. Yeah. Same thing with sports. Like, oh my god, it it, it, it it's so sad to see the fall from grace i mean we've had we can sit here and you know like we were doing before the show just naming guys i mean we can sit here and name shows i mean seriously Dan Lebitard, yeah. Bellani, yeah. uh yeah you, just the list goes on and on of who espn has laid off and 
the amount of people that they've laid off as well. I remember 2014, that's the first time where I was like, oh, ESPN sucks, is when they yep. laid off like, I don't know, I think it was like 1,200 people out of nowhere and just told them to go home. Like they don't work here anymore and didn't give them a heads up. It was the email blast that a lot of big companies do now, and I understand why they do it. It's just shitty. And uh, ever since then, I've been weary of ESPN. I, I don't really consume their content. It's not like I turn on the TV and I'm like, oh, let's turn on Sports Center. Like, oh, let's just turn on ESPN there in the random, like, random parts of the day where I can watch part of the interruption, which is still going around the horn, which is still going, but yep. isn't the same anymore. Those are the only two, like, daytime shows that they have that are just going now. First Take's yep. there, but I never watch First Take in the first place. I watch clips, and that's what they're going for. They're going for yep. clips. Yep. And if Zach Lowe's not going to give you Stephen A., Kendrick Perkins types, type of clips for 60 seconds, they can throw up on TikTok and YouTube shorts and all the things. Mm-hmm. They decided to get rid of them, and uh, yeah, it sucks. Twitch is the full on. I, I don't want to say the thing to blame. Live streaming in general has just like, and of course TikTok. You can go down yeah. the totem pole about you know, oh, people's attention spans, da, da 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 da. But I mean, it all starts from the original term, clip farming, and that's that's when you bring that on to uh, network television, you're completely discrediting the entire industry in of itself, and just sucks man like the fall from grace and like i said we we could have sat here last year and said the same thing when they laid off a hundred more people that we're gonna sit here in a year and be like what happened to espn i missed their old espn bet commercials or some stupid shit you know what i mean at some point there's got to be a backbone and i feel like you know maybe this is the time where i put my old man walking cane down and say this is enough you know this is the svp and will bond even will bond is a little crazy especially when he's on pregame shows but you know, Kornheiser, yeah. Wilbon, and SVP. I mean, I don't want to say that's the holy trinity of what we have going on at ESPN right now, but it's damn near close to it. And, you know, Tony Kornheiser, like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, it's, it's been years. Like, he, he needs to rest. Let the man rest. Yeah, let him let him go home. <laughs> just let him out of his cage. Let him go home. It's like the grandma in the cage meme. Like, just let him go. Yep. It's okay. Yep. Let, yep. Let him, give him a good retirement package and call it a day, please. When, when PTI went virtual, I, I think... You know, kind of around the same time that uh, SI, because I think they did that well before COVID. Yeah. Um, I you see exactly. We, we're sitting here just we can pinpoint each and every thing when it comes to ESPN and all that. I man, oof. RIP, <laughs> RIP, Zach Lowe, Ten Bell salute, Josh, right hand salute to you, brother. Um, come home, come to the yeah. ringer, please. I need those Sunday pods so bad. Uh, last thing before we go, it's October 1st, but yesterday was NBA Media Day. So everyone took their pictures and did their first day of school, like chalkboard with their favorite hobby and how many seasons they played in the NBA. It, I, I, I don't care for Media Day. No. It like gets me in the mood for basketball, but that's it. Like I don't take anything from Media Day. Like it's just the pictures and the new players and their new teams and their new jerseys. Like I'm fine. They have to be there. I mean, it's almost like the first day of school, but, you know, it it, it reminds me of that picture from uh, from that kid in kindergarten where he's like, he thought school was only one day. His ass got to be here for another 12 years. I mean, that's the that's us when we saw that DeMar DeRozan was a king. I mean, we totally forgot it. And, and, and man, it, yeah, life, that, life comes at you fast. That was shocking. Um, <laughs> it was on my feet, and I was like, oh, that did happen. I, I do remember that now, actually. Yep. Um, yep. The only one that I was like excited to see was Clay Thompson. That was about it. Yeah. it can't wait for him to have the. He's going to have such a crazy bounce back season, and I hate that I'm even like mentally manifesting this. But you know as well as anyone else, and I think I'm starting to know it's it, it's going to happen. He, he's he's just going to be a catch and shoot demon again, and everything's going to work out. Yeah, it's either that or he sucks. And right, sure, he's still, sure. He shot 39% from three last season, and he sucked, according to everyone else. So, and that was uh, an off year for the guy. I mean, seriously. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope it goes well. I have a lot of high hopes for my Dallas Mavericks. But, um, yeah, media day. It happened. Scoot Henderson yep. happened. The Poop Henderson. No, no more. No more. Um, can't even – I have no brain capacity to imagine what his brain capacity or lack thereof was – um saying dealing with whatever i mean seriously i he he was gotten asked he got if you didn't see the clip he got asked a question by the reporter and the reporter basically was just like what was your favorite you know what was the best thing you learned about your rookie season and he's like man i love the food and i i learned a lot i was like oh the food was probably cool 
I mean, cool. I mean, yeah, you're an NBA guy. Like you're getting fed. I Mark Cuban, <laughs> look at the, the the Mark Cuban, Stephen Jackson, Matt Barnes story. I mean, I, yeah. it, they get fed amazing food at, at most arenas. Um, mm-hmm. It does beg the question, though, if we're going to go down this route, who do you think? And of course, there might be one answer that I know you could really love. But who who do you think is the cheapest or worst NBA owner? Mm. That's interesting. The cheapest. Because that just has to mean that they don't give out contracts. Right. Sure. right? It, it starts or there. at the end of well, game. That's what's like <laughs> visible to everyone. Right. I've heard right. Boston spread is terrible for the visiting teams. Really? I heard it's really bad in the media section as well. And it's like one of the worst places to go if you're a media person is what they say. Like other than the, I don't know if you call it aura of TD Garden. Like <laughs> it's not the old garden. So I, yeah. I don't know if it still has aura, but like. You're in Boston. You should get like lobster rolls and shit. Yeah, fuck it. With clam chowder. Like, let's just rock out the Boston crowd and give them the, what they want. Because I know in Dallas they do like the best barbecue you can get, and that's the spread every night for the opposing team. That that's what they give them every single night. The best barbecue in Dallas. And they give it to an opposing team. They got the nice towels. They got all that kind of stuff. So the cheapest owner. That's it's. Is it New Orleans? Smoothie King Center. I mean, that's it's a place. It's a place, brother. Um, I've been. I, it, it, it's New Orleans. Is it like Chicago? Is it Orlando? Orlando uh, Chicago is probably up there. Chicago's got to be up there. Yeah. Orlando, maybe. I mean, of course, the the the, the payroll is going to get heftier and heftier as the years go on. So we'll see how that turns out. But or Chicago, Portland. Chicago was one one for me. And then Portland, maybe. Yeah, sure, sure. That one might be up there, but and I don't. They don't really have good food in Portland. Yeah, yeah. What they're not known for anything. Portland, yeah, Maine, food wa- food culture wise, Portland, Maine is known more than Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Portland has great wine, Pinot, Pinot Noir. It's incredible. Sure, I, sure. I did a race out there a couple of years ago, and it, they have great wine. But that's about it. Cool. The, the, yeah. The NBA talk, love it. That, I, that's I, the that's season media back. day talk, baby. <laughs> we're so back. Um, Man, happy October. Yeah, we're back. It's October. Uh, we'll be back a little bit more regularly heading into the season. We'll get some division previews out. We'll do some over unders heading into the last week of. Off season, we're getting ready, boys. Basketball's back. Inject it. You find a blood vessel. Let's do it. Basketball is back. Shout out to our sponsors, Big City Wings. Shout out to Big City Wings, Houston Swing Joint, Apollo Swing Joint. We love them. We did a watch party about a week ago uh, over there at Big City Wings. So if you want to watch football, basketball, baseball, we got playoff baseball right now. Just head over your nearest Big City Wings. There's 13 locations across Houston. So shout out to Big City Wings for sponsoring this episode. Shout out to Celebrity Don't forget the wrestling. Don't forget the wrestling. Oh. Yes, Apollo Wrestling. Uh, I think they're coming back pretty soon. I think in November. Next month, I think, is the next one for Apollo Wrestling over at Big City Wings. And shout out to Celebrity Mint. Go to CelebrityMint.com and just shop all of their tokens, their cards. They're all just a bunch of memorabilia stuff. It's the coolest thing ever. You got Mike Tyson. Uh, they do have another one that we're not going to say on this one because that person just died yesterday as well. Uh, but they got a new coin for Pete Rose, whatever. Okay. Go check that out. Uh Shout out Celebrity Mint for sponsoring this episode. They're back for with us for October. Shout out to Big City Wings. And shout out to you, Josh. Basketball's back. Let's do it. This has been Zero Gravity, Paul Media's NBA podcast.